Hello friends, you are watching a Rudire Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. Let's get started. Hello friends, today I'll show thermal analysis using ANSYS mechanical epidural. For modeling we have considered one hemispherical container with three different materials with different thermal conductivities. We have modeled this vessel with SOLIDWORKS and saved that part in IGS format. First of all we have to import that model from files. Let us import that model. Let us browse it from the desktop where we have saved this model. This was saved in a new folder by the name of assembly IGS. So this is the model. We have taken say hemispherical part of a container. Let us select different views of this one. We have considered three different materials, right? First one is having thermal conductivity 0 0.02 per meter degree Kelvin. Second one is 0 0.06 and the third one is 0 0.16 watt per meter degree Kelvin. These are the thermal conductivities of the three different materials. Okay. And actually we have assembled all these three different parts. Let us provide title of this one as thermal analysis. Okay. Then plot replot it will show the content thermal analysis at the lower left corner. We can create a directory and that work can be saved in the directory. We have already created a directory in the desktop by the name of new folder. Okay, starting our analysis from preferences. We want a thermal analysis. So thermal analysis checked in. Next one, preprocessor element type element type to be added as nothing is there so we have to add the element we are taking solid element and node we are selecting as 20 node 279 more than node meta is the solution so we are taking 20 node 279 okay close it next one material properties should be specified material models thermal conductivity is isotropic that means throughout the materials material properties will be same initial thermal conductivity we are providing 0 0.02 watt per meter degree kelvin let us provide second material new model material id2 let us provide thermal conductivity to this one as 0 0.06 okay and the third one material new model and material id is 3 let us provide thermal conductivity to this one as 0 0.16 watt per meter degree kelvin so we have provided three different materials of thermal conductivity 0 0.02 0 0.06 and 0 0.16 watt per meter degree kelvin now meshing we have to see the mesh attributes that means we have to provide those materials with thermal conductivities mesh attributes we can select picked volumes that means as per specific volume we have to provide the material and accordingly it will be meshed okay so let us select any one this is the first shell having inner diameter as 400 millimeter let us select that one and we have to provide material number one for this inner shell so material number is one applied now the second one to be selected and this is the second material okay so we have to apply material for that one we have to apply second material material number two for the second hemispherical part apply now the third one let us select the third one this is the third container okay okay and we have to provide a specific material for this one as material number three okay so we have defined three different materials inner one as material number one with thermal conductivity 0 0.02 watt per meter degree kelvin the second shell having material id number two and with thermal conductivity 0 0.06 watt per meter degree kelvin and the third one with material id three with a specific thermal conductivity of 0 0.16 watt per meter degree kelvin so material has been defined next one to go for meshing for meshing we are having different options let us select 
size controls size controls smart size and we are selecting basic size level is off we can go for finer mesh select one okay then let us go for meshing mesh volume free let us select all the volumes so pick all machine has already been started it is violating some constraints okay but machine is done if you want to go for further machine it can be done modified mesh can be done let us go for further machine modify mesh refine at all okay so mesh refinement is going on it is fine i think it is okay next one we have to apply boundary conditions that means inside we have to provide a temperature of 140 degrees centigrade and atmospheric temperature outside it will be 30 degrees centigrade our task will be to find out the interface temperatures okay so we have to apply boundary conditions from still pre-processing is going on meshing is complete we have to go for applying boundary conditions so solution define load apply thermal temperature temperature to be applied on specific areas on areas but before that you have to identify the areas because selection of areas uh, in ANSYS is a little bit difficult one so better to identify those areas in terms of uh, numbers then you can provide area numbers easily so what we'll do is let us plot areas these are the different areas and we have to provide name for these different plotting areas plot controls numbering and we want to make the numbering of areas to be on okay now you can see different colors with different numbers right when you see the numbers inside this inside surface area is 10 and if you see the outside one outside area is 17 so we got two different uh, specific uh, locations for applying boundary conditions we have to provide outside area to be 30 degrees centigrade at surface area number 17 and inside you have to provide at area number 10 we have to provide a temperature of 140 degrees centigrade okay so let us rotate this one a little bit okay so inside area is 10 next one we can go for these actual elements plot elements this is the original model what we have to do we have to apply boundary conditions inside surface inside curve surface we have to have Going to provide a temperature of 140 degrees centigrade and outside to be uh, 30 degrees centigrade okay so apply temperature on areas inside surface is area 10 so we can select 10 and apply and we to provide a temperature of 140 degrees centigrade at inside curve surface 140 degrees centigrade applied Next one we have to apply temperature at the outer surface to be 30 degrees centigrade. So we have to select the area number as 17. Okay. And temperature to be 30 degrees centigrade. Okay. So boundary conditions have been applied. We don't want to apply other conditions like convection from outer surface. So we are not bothered about convection. We are considering only conduction through different composite surfaces, right? Pre-processing is complete. We have to go for processing. That means we have to run it. Solve. Current LS. If everything is right, it will show solution is done. Otherwise, it will show some error message will be there. So it is calculating and it is showing that solution is done everything is perfect your processing is complete we can go for post processing that means we want to have the results and post processing can be obtained from general post processing you will see results in the form of plot results plotting and listing to be checked plot results 
can do plot nodal solution and we want to have temperature nodal solution degrees of freedom solution nodal temperature okay so you can see these things temperature at different interfaces at different surface we can see I'm better to see these things from some specific plane let us see these things from backside so we can see here clearly maximum temperature at the inner surface is 140 degrees centigrade and as it is approaching outside its temperature is reducing at different levels that means its temperature is ranging from 140 to 54 degrees centigrade in the first hemispherical shell in the second one you can see the range is from 54 to 42 degrees centigrade and in the third shell the temperature range is 42 to 30 degrees centigrade these are the temperature ranges we can have the specific temperature at different interfaces also that one will show through this listing results okay and excluding that one we can see some other thing like nodal solution and thermal gradient also can be checked thermal gradient thermal gradient for vector sum thermal gradient you can see so maximum is 2.16 and the minimum is 0 0.08 this is thermal gradient next one we want to see the thermal flux for vector sum maximum thermal flux is 0 0.04 and minimum one is 0 0.01 okay now all these things you can see in the form of listing results also let us see list results and nodal solution DOF solution nodal temperature okay like the previous case you can see here the data in the form of the all this temperature different nodes and you can see here maximum temperature is 140 degrees centigrade that is inside surface and that is at node number one at different nodes we are having different temperatures right at you can see at 60244 node number temperature is 94.549 degrees centigrade our task is to have the temperature at different interfaces of the different materials right we can have this specific temperature at different locations for that one what we have to do is we have to see the numbers of nodes at the different locations and then actually across this very very temperature distribution will be equal so what we'll do is plot controls numbering we want to see the node numbers to be on Okay, these are the different nodes available at different interfaces right so we can see that at any specific location across the periphery the temperature distribution is symmetric let us see any specific location from plot controls pan zoom rotate and you want to have a box zoom for any specific location let us see these things the temperatures let us see the temperature at node 135 and 223 and 315 these are the different nodes at different interfaces first node you can see at 590 this one at this location at this location temperature is actually 140 degrees centigrade and we have to find the temperature as different locations at here and here right first interface is this one and this is second and this is the third one third one is already known that is temperature 30 degrees centigrade our task is to have the temperature at this location and this location right so we can find out the temperature at node number 135 and 223 okay you can remember this 135 and 223 so we have to go for list results nodal solution temperature okay listing results are required that means we want to see the temperature at node number 223 and 315 you can see it 223 and 315 these are the node numbers first one is node number second one is the temperature we can vary this one 223 and 135 first one we will check the temperature at node number 135 you can see at node number 135 temperature is 54 degrees centigrade at that means you can say that first interface temperature is 54 degrees centigrade right and the second one uh, that is at node number 223 temperature is 35.1 degrees centigrade 
okay so we got that interface temperatures as 54 and 35 degrees centigrade first temperature t1 at the inside surface of this hemispherical shell is 140 degrees centigrade second one 54 degrees centigrade third one is 35 and the final one that is at the outside surface it is 30 degrees centigrade these are the temperatures available from this thermal analysis using ANSYS next one we will validate these results with respect to manual calculations let us see these manual results we have considered three different shells of different radius you can see the thermal circuit diagram we can see the temperature at different interfaces t1 is the temperature at the inside surface t2 the second interface t3 is the third one and t4 is the last one within these temperatures t1 is 140 degrees centigrade which is known and t4 is also 30 degrees centigrade which is known we have to find out temperature t2 and t3 from the thermal circuit diagram you can see that in between t1 to t2 we are having thermal resistance rth1 and between t2 to t3 thermal resistance rth2 and in between t3 and t4 we are having rth3 let us drag this one where well, you can see the heat transfer rate equal to del t by r theoretical r theoretical is a total resistance now in this case we know that uh, heat transfer rate to all the surfaces are equal total heat transfer rate equal to del t by r theoretical one here yeah, r theoretical one is e equal to r2 minus r1 by 4 pi k 1 r1 r2 so all this data is available here so we can from this data we can find out r theoretical one that is thermal resistance for the first circuit similarly thermal resistance for the second circuit is 0.88 and for the third circuit it is 0.23 applying all this data we can find the heat transfer rate equal to 21.57 joules per second that is 21.57 watt and as we know that heat transfer rate for all the surfaces is equal like uh, if we see that heat transfer rate from t1 to t2 is equal to same heat transfer rate from t2 to t3 so applying this one you can find out q dot heat transfer rate equal to t1 minus t2 divided by r theoretical one in this case we know t1 and r theoretical one and q dot is known so we can have the value of t2 that is first interface temperature it is 54.17 degrees centigrade which is exactly validated with our uh, analysis using ANSYS mechanical epidemiology. similarly uh, for the second interface temperature we know that q dot equal to t2 minus t3 divided by r theoretical 2 here in this case q dot is known that is heat transfer rate t2 is also known that is we obtained right now and t3 is unknown so applying all this data we can have t3 equal to 35.09 degrees centigrade which is exactly same what we got from our ANSYS thermal analysis okay so this is all about our today's thermal analysis using ANSYS mechanical epidemiology. in this case we have taken three different hemispherical vessels with different diameters and inside you have provided a constant temperature of 140 degrees centigrade and outside it was 30 degrees centigrade and through this analysis we got the interface temperatures okay if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts please write to me thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye